right, welcome everybody to Supernatural School of Ministry. Can we all stand to our feet, please? How are you guys doing today? Good, I can't hear you. I can get it. I'm like, <laughs> good, all right. Let's start praying and let's get excited. All right, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just welcome your presence here. We just thank you, Lord, that if two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst. And so, Father, right now, we acknowledge your presence in this place. And we thank you, Lord, that you are very present at the mention of your name, that you show up, that you're closer than a brother. And I just thank you, Lord, for the power of the name of Jesus. We just call on you right now. And we recognize you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We honor you. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for getting us here safely God I just thank you for all the people that are coming out God I pray for traveling mercies I thank you for protecting them and also setting their heart to receive and father we just thank you we want to honor you the Bible says in Psalms 40 verse 8 my heart is yours it says in the NLT version that my heart is to serve you and God we thank you Lord that we give you our heart today we honor you with our heart the Bible says so a man thinks in his heart so he is and father we want to think just like you and we command our mind to align with you we want our hearts to align with the word of God that uh, so a man thinks so so as you think so we are so the way you think is marvelous the way you think is abundance and God I thank you that we align our hearts with abundance that we think just like you that we're living the abundant life just as you are God that we're gonna prosper because that whatever we touch we shall prosper the Bible says those who are planted in the house of God God shall flourish in the courts of our God. And I thank you, Lord, that we flourish, that we produce, that we're fruitful in every area of our life, in our community life, in our relationships, in our marriages, in our friendships, Lord, in our families, God. I thank you for prospering us in influence and in, in, in family, God. I thank you that whatever we touch, you said whatever we touch, it shall prosper. And I thank you, Lord, that whatever we touch, it will prosper according to your word. You said in your word, in Psalms 119 that your word is settled in heaven and so God we thank you that your word is settled in heaven that our names are written in the book of life that you have talked about us with uh with the Holy Ghost and we just thank you for the Holy Spirit that is present in this place we thank you for our comfort our helper that you are a very present help in time of trouble and so Lord we thank you for your presence we thank you Holy Spirit that you are moving in this place God I thank you for ideas being released today I thank you for downloads from heaven the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word became flesh and that word word means logos it means to be a thought and idea so God had an idea about you and God Jesus was the expressed idea of, of, of God so Lord we thank you for logos today we thank you for words from above we thank you Lord that we think like you that we set our minds on things above and not on things beneath that we have the mind of Christ that we set ourselves a treasures in heaven Lord we thank you that wherever our heart is there our treasure will be also so I thank you that our treasure is is in heaven that we don't lay up treasures on earth that we lay up treasures in heaven that we think according to your word that we think just as you do lord and so god i thank you i thank you that this is a time to, of inventory a time to think where our heart is and god i thank you that our heart is in you that we don't serve mammon but we serve god that we choose god above all things and Lord, we thank you that we're choosing you today, that we yield to the Holy Spirit, that we're surrendering it all, that we surrender every area of our life. God, I thank you that we'll be like in the book of James, that we won't forget how we look like, that we'll look at the perfect law, the law of liberty, that we'll be a doer of your word, that we would have faith with works, that the word says faith without works is dead, but I thank you, God, that we have faith, that we have words, that we have productivity, Lord. That we're, that we're producing, Lord, that we're representing you, God. We want to represent you in your marvelous light. We thank you, Lord, that you translate us from the uh, the place of darkness, the dominion of darkness, into your marvelous light. God, I thank you. It was only by you, it was only by your spirit that we were able to conform to the image of Christ, which is an image of you, Lord. And I thank you that as we conform to you, we, we, we conform to abundance, we conform to prosperity, that we think just 
just like you. God, I just thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. Lord, we pray for every person that comes in today. I pray that their hearts will be ready to receive, and we remove every foully ground. We speak crop failure, and we rebuke the spirit of poverty. We rebuke the spirit of lack. I thank you that we will not lack at all. You said in Joshua 1, 8, to meditate on your word day and night, for it, sh it shall not depart from your lips, and that whatever you do, it shall succeed, that we shall prosper. And I thank you, Lord, as your word says, that since we meditate on your word day and night, that we will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, and that whatever we touch, it shall prosper. And God, we thank you, Lord, for your very manifest presence. I thank you, Lord, for moving in this place. I thank you, Lord, for witty inventions. I thank you, Lord, that you said in Proverbs 13 that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And I thank you, Lord, that we are good people, good women and men of God, that we will leave an inheritance, that we will think about generational wealth, that we would honor you in everything we do. And I thank you, Lord, that whatever we do, we do it unto you, Lord. And we give you all the praise and all the honor. Just give God some praise. God, we praise you. We bless you. We thank you, Lord, for your manifest presence. God, I thank you, Lord, as David said that he perceived when he came to the house of God. It says in Psalm 79 that he was going through some stuff. And when he came to the house of God, his mind became sound. And so, God, I thank you as people walk in that chains are breaking, strongholds are breaking and falling to the ground, that the minds would align with your word, that their own mind would be sound, that chaos would leave their mind today in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that we give our heart to you today, that our heart is fixed, as it says in Psalms 57, that our heart is fixed on you, that our only pleasure is to please you, God. And I thank you, Lord, that we're pleasing you today in every area and in our thoughts, Lord. We command every imagination that is not of God to, to re be removed in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for preparing our hearts to receive, that the word that comes forth will fall on good soil, and that it would yield a hundredfold today and that we would be doers of your words, paeos, the ones who produce, who is fruitful and, and produces, God. I thank you that we are doers of your word, that we won't forget what we hear like a man who looks at himself in the mirror and immediately forgets who he is. No, Lord, we thank you that we remember who we are in Christ, that we choose our identity in you, that we put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision in regards of its loss. And we thank you, Lord, that we're putting on the Lord Jesus. We're putting on the Lord Jesus in our mind and our hearts and our souls. Lord, and I thank you for this time. We bless this time. We pray over Pastor. We thank you, Lord for Pastor Keenan and Pastor Gloria for bringing them back safely, God. And we just thank you, Lord, for your protection. We thank you, Lord, for anointing him, anointing his lips with oil, that he will give him the tongue of the learned. And we thank you, Lord, that he will have the right word for you today. And I thank you, Lord, that this word will bring birth into us, Lord, that we would produce. The word says there's a time to birth and a time to upplant. And I thank you, Lord, that we're birthing the word today, that we're going to bring forth fruit. And God, we bless you. We honor you you. We worship you. We thank you for everybody who's coming in today. Lord, I thank you for every person that comes. Lord, I thank you that they would encounter the true living God, that they won't have an evil heart, as the word says in Hebrews 3, that, that lest there be any evil heart of you, of evil unbelief. We rebuke unbelief today. I God, I thank you that we have belief, that we believe you to do all things. It says all things are possible to him that believes. And God, I thank you that we believe leave and Lord we thank you that we're, our faith is rising and that we're going to believe what your word says as your word says you will have what you say and we will have what we say today and that our words will align with you today in the name of Jesus we bless this time we give you all the praise all the glory and we just thank you for yielding we thank you in advance for the fruit that will be yielded today we thank you Lord for uh, producing more through us in the name of Jesus we thank you for the spirit of might the spirit of counsel, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. God, we thank you for magnifying your word above all your name. And we give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for Sister Sarah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
I just want to share this scripture. This says Psalm 145, verse 18 and 19. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. To all that call upon him in truth. Hallelujah. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Hallelujah. Last week, that scripture proved to be true in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord will hear your cry and he will save you. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name forever. How many glad to be here at Supernatural School of Ministry tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for you, those of you who are here in the sanctuary, as well as those of you who are watching via live stream, worshiping with us here at Grace and Peace. On behalf of Dr. Keenan and Pastor Gloria, we say welcome. Amen. And as we continue our worship this evening, we want you to be mindful of the following Grace and Peace protocols. During our worship, we ask that you do not chew gum, eat, or drink beverages other than water in the sanctuary. And please, either turn off or silence your electronic devices now so as not to interrupt the service flow. If you would be so kind as to take your instruments out and either turn them off or silence them so as not to interrupt the service flow. And unless you are authorized, Grace and Peace ministerial staff, please refrain from administering personal ministry to individuals such as praying, laying on of hands, or giving prophetic words. And of course, during times of prayer or altar ministry, we ask that you remain reverent and refrain from walking and talking unnecessarily. And if you should desire to give anything to a child, we ask that you please consult the parent first. And parents, please accompany your minor children if they must leave the sanctuary for any reason other than a sanction, grace and peace dismissal, such as our children's church. And of course, your attention to these protocols will contribute to an uninterrupted flow of the presence and the power of God. Can we all say amen? Amen. At this time, we'd like you to please pay attention to our pre recorded announcements. Hello. On behalf of Dr. Keenan T. Bridges and Pastor Gloria Bridges, we welcome you to another day of worship and fellowship here at Grace and Peace. This is the place where grace reigns and Jesus Christ is Lord. We welcome those of you worshiping with us here in the sanctuary, as well as those of you watching via live stream. Grace and Peace is located at 6015 Interbay Boulevard, Tampa, Florida. Whenever you are in the area, you are always welcome to worship with us here at Grace and Peace. Our mission is to liberate the captive, restore the broken, and equip God's people to walk in his supernatural power so that they can release the kingdom of God to the ends of the earth. Our core values are discipleship, maturity, demonstration, and multiplication. Our core message is prayer, presence, preaching, and power. We have some outstanding discipleship opportunities for you here at Grace and Peace as follows. Our Supernatural Sunday service is every Sunday. Intercessory prayer starts at 9.30 a.m. and worship begins at 10 a.m. This service is also streamed to Facebook Live and to YouTube Live. Join us as we embark on an exciting discovery of the hidden treasures in the Word of God. Prepare your hearts to experience the miraculous and supernatural power of God through prayer, praise, and preaching the unadulterated, life-changing Word of God. Monday through Friday, we have our daily morning call from 6 a.m. to 6.15 a.m. The prayer phone call number is 727-731-5371. We also have our corporate church fast, which is every Wednesday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We end our fast with 15 minutes of prayer beginning at 5.45 p.m. to 6 p.m. using the same prayer line phone number, which is 727-731-5371. Every Tuesday, we have our Supernatural School of Ministry hosted by our very own Pastor Keenan T. Bridges. Service is held here at the church starting at 7 p.m. This is an in-depth, interactive, and participatory Bible study with our pastor. Through his profound revelation of the Word of God and dynamic teaching ministry, Pastor Keenan will equip you with the tools to walk in your supernatural calling. Come ready expecting healing, miracles, impartation, activation, deliverance, and breakthrough. 
Next, we have our Saturday Night Live Hour of Power Prayer from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. You are invited to come experience a powerful time of prayer, prophecy, and impartation. Jesus tells us that if we shall agree on earth as touching anything that we ask, it shall be done. For this reason, the Hour of Power Prayer is one of the most important services of the week. You don't want to miss this. Join us as we intercede for the nation and the body of Christ. This service is also streamed via Facebook and YouTube Live. Every third Sunday of the month at 6.30 p.m., we have the Healing School with Pastor Kenan T. Bridges. We believe that according to the Word of God, healing is the divine right of every born-again believer. Jesus himself bore our sins in his body, and his atoning sacrifice produced in us the reality of the forgiveness of sins, healing in our body, and divine health. Be empowered to live in the reality of what Christ has purchased for the church and learn how to apply the word of God to administer healing to yourselves and to others. Please note that if you're not able to visit us in person, you can always join us via live stream for all services at the appointed time mentioned earlier. Just follow Dr. Keenan T. Bridges on Facebook and YouTube and make sure your notifications are turned on. We hope that you will avail yourselves of these tremendous opportunities for your discipleship and growth and living the Christ life. Amen. We have a few more additional announcements for you. The Temple Keepers Ministry, the Grace and Peace Temple Keepers Ministry, is seeking additional ministry workers to assist in the maintenance of the cleanliness and orderliness of the sanctuary and the other common spaces of the church proper. Everyone expects all areas of the church proper to be clean and in order, but it takes willing hands to accomplish this. Amen. So if you are interested in being a participant in this very, very essential ministry, please see Sister Sonia Montez, and we thank you. The WhatsApp chat, Grace and Peace, has a WhatsApp chat entitled New Grace and Peace Family, by which we communicate with our members. Emphasis is placed on the chat being for the members of Grace and Peace. So if you are a member and desire to be linked in with this chat, please email me at pastorbracy at graceempower.org and please include your name and telephone number in your correspondence. The Grace and Peace Bookstore would like to inform you that the bookstore is open after each service for you to purchase your spiritual enrichment items. And there are more copies available of Unmasking the Accusable, uh, oh, Lord, the Accuser, excuse me. <laughs> Unmasking the Accuser. <laughs> and it is also available in Spanish, so be, please be sure and stop into the bookstore. If you or a family member need deliverance, and would like to schedule a deliverance session with our deliverance team, you may do so by forwarding a request to the following email, sozo at graceempowered.org. And please be sure to include your name and telephone number. And if you need an appointment with Dr. Keenan, for other than deliverance, you may see me, Pastor Bracy, or email me at pastorbracy at graceempowered.org. Or you may email pastor at graceempowered.org, and Sister Tessie Brignoni will attend to your request. Amen? Amen. That concludes our announcements. Would everyone please stand as we welcome to the pulpit back from the Dominican Republic, Dr. Keenan T. Bridges. Let's thank God for him. Give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in God's presence. All right. We have a lot to cover in a very short time. So I want you guys to do me a favor. Uh, I want to show you something real quick. This is like top secret information. So this is a copy of my brand new book called Releasing Miracles. Okay, I only have one copy, so no, you can't have this. I know you were thinking about it, but this is what I want you to do. I want you to do me a favor. Really do yourself a favor. Take out your phones. Come on, take out your phones. Take your phone now. Take your phone now. I'm just going to suspend the protocols for a few moments. Go to Amazon. 
type in releasing miracles. Glory be to God. And there's a button on there that says pre-order. Let the Holy Spirit direct your fingers. Those watching online, I wanted to do this because, you know, um, I want people to get it as soon as it comes out. I believe it comes out November 4th, 8th. Okay, November 8th. I told somebody wrong today on the whole television show. I said the 4th. Praise God. But anyway, it comes out November 8th. Go ahead and pre-order it if you can. I would encourage all of you, you all watching to pre-order it. Releasing Miracles, how to, how to Walk in the Supernatural Power of God. Releasing Miracles, How to Walk in the Supernatural Power of God. It has a foreword by, this is the actual book, by the way. It's not just a galley copy. Foreword by Sid Roth. Um, look at what uh, Dr. Randy Clark said. Releasing Miracles is an excellent book on the subject. I found it to cover so many valuable issues regarding healing and miracles. I found it biblically balanced and well-written. A great book for someone interested in healing for themselves or the ministry of healing for others. Very thorough in the subjects covered and full of great illustrative stories. That's uh, Randy Clark from... Uh, Global Awakening and a professor at Theolo no, is he no Global Awakening Theological Seminary. All right, so go get it if you can. It's a great resource. Um, this comes out November eighth. We're excited. We're gonna have some things coming up. The 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 uh, book launch team. I want you to just give me a shout immediately after the service. I won't hold you too long. I just want to just kind of shout out at you real quick during the service. Amen? Or after the service. So what you're going to do, you're going to go to Amazon and do what? Thank you. All right, let's pray and get into the word for today. Father, we just want to thank you and honor you for your word. Let every word that I speak tonight be that which is ordained and commissioned by you, that you alone may be glorified. Lord, give me the tongue of the learned that I may speak a word in season. Awaken my ears to hear as the learned. Awaken their ears to hear and to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church. Let me say that one more time because the hurricanes still have some of you. So awaken their ears to hear and to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Um, before I get into the message for tonight, I want to challenge you because tonight is going to be one of those messages where it's going to challenge you. It's going to challenge you. You're going to be, you're going to be challenged by tonight's message. You're going to be challenged by tonight's message. Uh, but I believe it's also going to be a message that delivers you. Somebody say, I'm going to get delivered. Tonight's message is going to be a message of deliverance. It's a delivering message, a message of deliverance. And so I really want to be uh, thorough in how I communicate this word tonight because it's so key uh, what I'm going to share. I'll give you the title and get right into the teaching for tonight. The title of tonight's message is Exposing, let me, let me first, let me see what this is, hold on, okay, make sure I got it right. Come on, somebody. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It's called the religion of poverty. The religion of poverty. Exposing the spirit of mammon. I want you to write it down. The religion of poverty exposing the spirit of mammon. The religion of poverty exposing the spirit of mammon. Hallelujah. 
But we're going to find our text over there in Matthew chapter 6. Now, again, what do we say about tonight? Tonight's going to do what? And it's going to do what? No, it's going to do, say, let's say it again. Tonight's message is going to do what? What, what in the world? Y'all got PISD? PISD, that's post Ian stress disorder. Y'all all right? Some of your mouth didn't even move. Just see. Man, man. Man, man. Okay. All right. Tonight's message is going to do what two things? Tonight's message is going to challenge you. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning with verse 3. Put it up on the screen. I want you to see this. 2 Corinthians 10, beginning with verse 3. Put it up on the screen, please. Any translation. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Somebody say strongholds. strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now what does it say? When it says pulling down strongholds, what does it say? Casting down what? Imaginations. That word imaginations, go to your strongs. Logismos, it means to have logical arguments. Logical arguments, reasonings. Logical arguments and reasonings. Now, let me tell you why I want to share this message with you. The Bible says you cannot put new wine into an old wineskin. Because if you try to put new wine in an old wineskin, what's going to happen is that the new wine will actually, first of all, the new wine will burst the old wineskin and the wine will be wasted. Now, when we talk about a wineskin, and I'm getting into my message, I haven't gotten into there yet, we're talking about our framework, our framework, the way we think, the way we think, our paradigm. That's why Jesus preached, repent, for the kingdom is at hand. Now, why did Jesus say repent? Anybody tell me. Why did Jesus say repent? Change your thinking? Why is that necessary? Yes. Because it's getting rid of the old wineskin in a sense of like way that you thought and perceived things and it creates like a fresh like a clean slate very good listen to this i can't enter the kingdom of god i cannot successfully enter the kingdom of god unless i change my mind i can't enter the kingdom unless i change change my mind not just have a spiritual transformation I have to have a mental transformation. And I will submit to you, the problem is not our spirit. When you got born again, your spirit got saved. Your spirit man was born again. The problem most of us have is not our spirit. The problem most of us have is our mind. How many can agree with that? The problem most of us have is our mind. The way we think, our thought life, the way we think, the, 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 the reasoning of the mind, the mentality. Somebody say a mentality. A mentality. Right? So to watch this. So Paul, the apostle, writes in 2 Corinthians 10, he says that what we're up against, the warfare that we're up against 
is not a warfare of the flesh, it's a warfare of the mind. He said you got to cast down imaginations. Cast down imaginations. Logical arguments. Hostile to the word of God. Okay, y'all follow me so far. I'm not even in my message yet. All right, watch this. So, and I got to give you some, you know, the reason why I'm, I believe this is an important message for the body of Christ is because the reason is this. Oftentimes, we don't realize that it's the way we think that is hindering our progress in the things of God. We also don't realize that our way of thinking, oh, good God Almighty, you hear me tonight, that our way of thinking is actually causing us to not be able to receive what we want from God. That there are things that you can desire from God that your mentality can block you from receiving. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get into it tonight. All right, watch this. Go to Matthew chapter 6. I want you to see this. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Jesus says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Then he says, this, this, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. And if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Listen to this. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat and what you shall drink nor yet for your body what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And, if, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like unto one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass, hallelujah, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall you eat, or what shall you drink? For wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth not that ye have need, knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now, we've how many have read this before? How many have heard this before? Raise your hand. Okay. Now, I want to show you from a different angle what this is all about. 
I want you to see this. Jesus says, no man can serve two masters. Either he will love the one and hate the other. Or he will cleave to the one or hold to the one and despise the other. No, watch this. Either he will love the one or hate the other or cleave to the one and despise the other. Now, hear me by the Holy Ghost, and I hope you hear this. We've always thought that Jesus was only talking to rich people here. Why do I say that? Huh? Because they have money. So if he's talking about money, he can't be, he's talking about the rich folks. He ain't talking about nobody else. First of all, how many know that according to, according to the census of nations, everybody in this room is richer than most people in the world today. Y'all didn't even say, y'all didn't believe it. You didn't believe it. You said, the way my Tico set up, I don't know. Y'all didn't want to say amen to it. They didn't want to say amen. Some of y'all checked your account when I said that. Said, if I transfer the savings to the checking and the Bitcoin to the... Okay. All right. Watch this. Mammon was said to be a deity that people worshipped. Mammon does not just mean money. Mammon is not money. Mammon was a religion. It was, watch this, it was a religious system based upon people's consumption and their preoccupation with their daily needs. Mammon was a system of believing that caused the person to be consumed with their daily needs. That's why if you look at the scripture, Jesus now contrasts worshiping mammon with the next, with the following verse, don't take any thought for your life. Don't take no thought for your life. What you should eat, what you should put on. Don't put, it, no, don't put any thought for your life. Hold on now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. That's a contrast from mammon. He says, you cannot serve God and be preoccupied with your needs at the same time. I'm taking my time on this for a reason. There's an idol of money in the body of Christ. And I'm going to blow your mind. And, and watch this. When I say an idol of money, you think about your favorite televangelist. But no, 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 no that idol is not worshipped. Come on, somebody, in the, in, in, in the studios of televangelism, those idols are worshipped in the pews. I'm okay, I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going I'm to I'm go deep because y'all got, y'all real quiet tonight. Real quiet tonight. Real quiet. Let me, let me, let me uh, see if you can finish this phrase that I'm about to tell you. I'm just going to say it, and I want you to finish what you think comes after. You ready? Money.
Okay, let's try it again. You ready? Let's see what page y'all on. Money. No, 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 no. Okay, let me help you. Anybody ever heard the phrase "money talks"? And some of y'all need deliverance already. There's a phrase in the world that money talks. And, okay, I'm not going to do the other part. Money talks. I will submit to you that money does not talk. To talk is to have a conversation. Money answers. See, money just answers. Circumstances pose the question. Money answers. But I'm going to show you something profound. It's not money that talks, it's mammon that talks. Mammon talks because mammon in the text is personified because God would not compare himself to something that does not have a personality. Are y'all ready for this tonight? He didn't say, you can't serve God and coins. He didn't say, you can't serve God and, and denarii. He said, you, you, you can't serve God, come on somebody, and, and, and naira or francs or pounds. He didn't say that. He said, you can't serve God and mammon. Because mammon was an idol. Mammon was an idol that was worshipped. And this worship of mammon precluded people from giving their whole heart to God. All right, listen to me. Can I go a little deeper? Let me explain this to you. I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I want to explain this to you. Whatever you worship is what has the loudest voice in your life. Oh, I'm going to go a little deeper. Jesus said either he will love the one and hate the other or hold to the one and despise the other, which means what I worship is what I cannot let go of. Whatever you can't let go of is what you worship. I'm going to go a little deeper. Whatever you worship is the voice that speaks in your life. And whatever you worship is what you hear from. That's why, listen, there's some believers, you know who they hear from? Themselves. They don't hear from God. Because they're holding on to themselves. I said, whatever you worship is what you can't let go of or what you hold on to. Watch this. And it's what you hold on to that you hear from. Y'all just don't come up because I eat and all in your spirit. I cast even in out of you. I cast that hurricane out of your spirit. Some of y'all are like, like, I wish y'all could see yourselves. It's crazy. Some people be like, I'm like, hey. 
It's whatever you hold on to that you hear from. One of the biggest lies in the body of Christ is God told me. And it's not a lie because they didn't hear something. Good God Almighty, I feel this. It's a lie because they didn't distinguish which God told them. Because some people are hearing from God, but it's the God of self. So they pray to themselves and answer themselves. I remember I used to do that. Some of y'all still do it. I don't know why you're laughing. Some of y'all still do it till today. And I remember I was in college. I liked this girl. And I remember I went to my room, I went to the bathroom, I had this ominous moment. I was just trying to figure out, I said, is this the chosen one? And I go to the bathroom and I said, Father. That's how you know, first of all, you already know you're off because you're talking crazy. You know, you, you're using King James English. I said, <laughs> Father. <laughs> Father. Is this the one for me? And, I, and watch this. And I begin to hear the Lord say, yes, my son. But while I was hearing the yes, I heard a no in the yes. I said, yes. Not no. And this is what I'm saying. I'm going to break this down. We're just getting started tonight, but I got to take you on a little journey. So understand that, that, that what I began to understand is that you can't serve God and mammon. It is impossible to serve the Lord if mammon is still your God. It means that if you think you're serving, it's not God you're serving. Okay, we said whatever you can't let go of is your God. Has God ever told you to do something? Has God ever told you to give something? And you argue with him about it. Yeah, I, okay, no hands went up, so I'm asking it again. Has God ever said, give something? And you begin to negotiate Raise your hand. Some, some deliverance is going to happen right now. W w watch this. The weapons of a warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strong holes. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Mammon was not worshipped by the rich. He was worshipped by the poor. The rich didn't need to go to an idol for their provision. It was the poor that throw money, a penny in the wishing well. The wealthy don't go to the wishing well. You may say, well, we mean wishing well. We'll call whatever. They don't go to the lottery line either. The lottery is designed for poor people. The wealthy do not go in the lottery line. Because they don't believe that their success is up to chance. See, understand. Whenever you go to an altar, you have to make a sacrifice. So when you go to the scratch off, Somebody getting delivered right now. I'm casting every demon out of here. When you go to the scratch off and come on, Jesus. When you go to the casino, offering. When you go, offering. When you gamble with spades, offering. Dominoes, offering. Why? Because you have yielded yourself 
to an idol that you have sacrificed to in order to get a little something, something that can help you out. Can I talk to you tonight? I'm telling you, you're going to get set free by the Holy Ghost. Poverty is a religion. Poverty is a religious system. And it has to, it's fed. I'll never forget, I, I come out of church one day, and man, Tampa in 2016 was rated one of the most unchurched cities in the United States. I have never seen in my life, since I've been, lived here, a situation where people who are saved have a, such a hard time coming to church. I mean, people who speak in tongues, and the most difficult thing for them to do is get up and go to church on Sunday. I've never seen anything like it. But now I understand why. I was in the mall. I mean, uh, we left the church one day. We went to the food court to get some food. I don't know if it was West Shore or International Plaza. And, boy, I tell you something, the, the malls were filled. Every car known to man was outside in that parking lot on Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. in the morning, or whatever, like 12 when we got out. And they've probably been there since 11 when the mall opened. And the Lord, Holy Spirit said to me, he says, they're in church. I said, what? He said, this is their church. And they brought their offerings. They brought their offerings. See, the Spirit of God is trying to set many of us free from a transgenerational idolatrous system that we gained and we learned from our parents and grandparents and from extended family and from television and all those kinds of things that has actually been adopted into the church. It has become a religious system of the church because why? People don't recognize that if it's hard for me to let go of what's in my hand, it is an indication that I am serving someone else. How do I know this? The most difficult thing in the body of Christ is money. Do you know there are more scriptures on money than there are on salvation? Go look it up. Why? Because Jesus said it. Where your treasure is, that's what your heart's going to be. See, I got to, oh, y'all, yeah, see, I, I can feel the, the skeletor spirit is trying to rah. <laughs> Why? Because money is an indicator. Write that down. Money is just an indicator. And that's why, listen, God is more concerned with your character than giving you some more money. Because all money does is amplify what you already are. Those pedophiles... Epstein and all that stuff with billions of dollars, you know what the billions gave them? More access to do more nasty stuff. It didn't make them, they were already what they were. But the money gave them more access to do more wrong. Well, see, see, because see, the, I'm just telling you, Pastor, it's not about money. And this is what, oh, God, help me. This is what blows my mind about it or, or blesses my mind. Watch this. It's the fact that Christians tell so many lies. It's almost unfathomable. A Christian will get up. I've seen it with my own eyes. They'll get up and they'll say, you know what? You know, that's why, you know, it's a, all the church does is talk about his money. No, all you do is talk about his money. That's all you talk about. Whoever that person is. The you is not you other than the audience. I'm saying whoever that person is. Why? The number one prayer request that comes into any ministry, and I've been all over the world, 
is finances. There are more prayer requests about finances than any other issue on the planet. People, let me tell you something. Before people pray for healing, they pray about money. People will pray for money to pay the doctor's bill before they pray to get healed. That's to show you the power of money. So why is it that an issue that we talk about more to God about than our own salvation? People pray more about finance than they do about heaven. But when folks get in the church and say, well, they better not be talking about money up in there. So we better not be talking about what you just prayed about all week long. See, preachers, the preachers are scared to talk to y'all. See, because the preachers have been manipulated by the poverty spirit in Christians. So preachers got to play all kind of games with y'all. See, we can't call it give me some money. We say give me some support. We got to say partner with me because folks don't like the word so. They don't like the word give. These are, these are words that are triggering words. So the publicist tells the preacher to use a manipulative word to make you do what you should have did when you got saved. You should have gave your soul to God. You should have gave God your life. You should have gave him your heart. You should have gave him your mind. And if he has your heart, your life, and your mind, why doesn't he have your money? Why does somebody have to beg you to do what God the creator has told you to do? Now, now watch this. this is, let me show you what, what I'm saying. Now, here it is. Watch this. This is what happens because I'm going to get you delivered tonight. Well, I, I, that just feels condemning to me. It feels condemning. Like, I, I, I mean, we should be able to just whatever we feel like doing. How many of you heard that? Let's, let's come on. We're going to do it tonight. Whatever we feel like doing, I mean, it's what's on my spirit. I mean, I, I just do what I'm led to do. You go to the, you go to the ER, $2,500, $3,000, cause you hit your toe going to the kitchen to get some Edie's ice cream. And you walk in that ER, they say $2,500 for this visit, $1,700 for this visit. And if they touch you or take blood work, they charge a whole separate fee for putting the needle in your body. I know what I'm talking about now. An oncologist can charge $50,000 for one radioactive pill. You would think people would pray about health, but they don't. They don't pray about health. They pray about, Lord, help me pay these medical bills. I'm trying to show you all something. So God said to me, I was sharing with somebody the other day, I want to give you an eavesdrop on our conversation. We were talking about the spirit of poverty. And poverty is an, an obsession with self. You say, well, hold on. How is that true, Pastor? Poverty, no, poverty means people don't have what they need. No, in any nation in the planet, on this planet, do you know I did the math? They did some research recently to prove this. There is enough money in circulation right now. If we didn't print another dime, another dollar, there are enough dollars on this planet for every human being on the planet to be a millionaire. Every human being. So then say, well, why is every human being not wealthy? Because this is what people say. Well, you know, you know, you can't, you can't prosper in a third world country. Why can't you? Nigeria produces 25% of the oil, used to, 25% of the oil to the United States of America, and the average person cannot afford a piece of bread. And you're talking about a nation that has a $523 billion economy. 
not about a lack of money. It's about selfishness. It's about greed. It's about, come on somebody, corruption. People aren't suffering because there's not enough trees in the world. There's not enough potatoes in the ground. I was in Zambia, South uh, West, Southern Africa, and they did a geological study. They said there was enough gold reserves in Zimbabwe to last 250,000 years. Gold is not scarce. Diamonds are not rare. It's all over the planet. This, this, this earth is made out of carbon. Diamonds are, are carbon. They're everywhere. Go to Sierra Leone, you can kick them on the side of the road. Po folks won't even realize what they are. So what's the problem then? The problem is Satan has established a system where people will go to him for their needs. And not to the God of their creation. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I, I, do I have your attention yet? I'm trying to get your attention tonight. If the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, if 75% of this, let me give you some challenges. If 75% of this globe, and it is a globe, I know somebody believes the earth is flat, but <laughs> I'm sorry. I know you might leave the church over. Somebody left the church over. They said, you said, they said, we don't like that globe right there. That's antichrist. And I said, okay, God bless you. Um, but uh, <laughs> my church's school sent a can to outer space. True story. And they recorded the whole thing from the time it launched from the rocket to the time it came back. And unfortunately, we saw some pictures of what the earth looked like. Now, I know you're going to say, well, no, Beelzebub printed those pictures <laughs> in Haiti, in, in Hades. I hear you, but I digress. Now, <laughs> my, I have argued with my friend about it. it it's, it's a real thing. Like, people really, it's a, it's a, but whether you believe the earth is flat or not, God bless you anyway, but <laughs> what I'm saying is this. If 75% of this planet is made of water, how come so many nations don't have clean drinking water? When we have desalinization technology, we know how to get the salt and the bacteria out of seawater easily. How does a country like Haiti, that is an island, surrounded by water, folks die of thirst? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So what am I saying to you? If my father is the creator, I'm getting somebody delivered tonight, and he has all resources at his disposal, why in the world would I worry about what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, what I'm going to put on? You know what we were? Because poverty is a religious system. And many of us have been raised in the religion called poverty. And the only way to operate in the kingdom of God is to renounce that religion. If you don't renounce that religion, you can never serve Jesus. You can never be blessed. You can never prosper. Because you can't serve two masters. Are you getting something so far? Years ago, we were, I started the ministry, and I, I quit my job, and y'all know the story, I've told it a million times. But it came to a point where I just didn't have the resources, and I'm saying, Lord, I'm tired of this, I don't have no money. Anybody ever been so broke, you just get mad? <laughs> How many raise your hand have ever been that? Just be honest. Some of y'all never experienced that. Thank God for you. 
Some people are like, no, never, never experienced that. Ever. Like, I'm just, I've always been happy. I'm happy right now. Like, I'm just happy. I, I'm not worried about anything. I used to be angry. I was mad. It makes you mad. Brokenness makes you mad. You mad at everybody. Why are they barbecuing outside, releasing all those toxins in the atmosphere, destroying the ozone layer? Why they, why they, you know, you going, you peeking the Burger King. Why they eating on the, the regular, why they getting the number six? <laughs> Eat off the dollar menu like a decent human being. <laughs> Disgusting. And, 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 and listen, when a person doesn't have any money, you just, the people that have money become your enemy. They're demons. <laughs> I'm gonna get you delivered tonight. I remember we used to remember drive on Bayshore and people with money, they would run different. <laughs> people that struggle run like this. They tired, they can't breathe. Well, the people on Bayshore. <laughs> disgusting. Filthy. Put your shirt on, you disgusting demon. I mean, you're just like. And so I was mad, y'all. I was upset. I was upset. You hear me? Upset. Why am I in this situation? Why is this happening to me? Notice the common denominator. Me. Because you can't be preoccupied with your needs and be thinking about the needs of others at the same time. It's not even possible. It's not possible. I'm like, ah, I'm just, I'm, I'm upset. And the Holy Spirit gently in only the way he can came to me and he says, son, I said, yes, Lord. So I was even mad how I answered. I'm like, yes, Lord. He said, You're serving mammon. Wait, wait, hold on, Lord. Hold on. I thought that was for people driving in Maseratis. And I'm not driving in a Maserati. I'm driving in a Roddy. <laughs> so I'm saying, Lord, that can't apply to me. He says, no, son. He said, you've made an idol out of money. I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, what have you been thinking about all day? What have you been meditating on all day long? What's been your focus this whole day? How I'm going to pay the mortgage? How I'm going to pay this bill? How are we going to afford food? All day long, that's all I was thinking about. He said, that's what you've been worshiping, not me. Here's what happened. I literally, in that moment, I said, Lord, I renounce the idol of mammon. And I repent for worshiping another God. Fifteen minutes later, somebody knocked on the door. 
They said we were in our bed. We, I mean, we were at our house, and the Lord just kept putting you on my heart. He told me to bring you two. Uh, they brought two money orders, $500 each for a total of $1,000. That was exactly what we needed in that season. Now, this is antithetical to what we have been taught. Because, because there's some preachers that, and I, you know, and I understand this, and, and I'm being careful how I say this, but it's almost like there's some circles of Christianity where we treat God like a slot machine. Money! Ho! Hey! Ha! And what's happening, the problem is not your declaration. See, it's one thing to decree the thing and it be established. But it's another thing when your heart is not on the one who was able to provide, but your heart is on the provision. I'm preaching real good. I, I. When, listen, because now you're more focused on the creature than the creator. I used to do all that stuff. And then when you do that and you sow, but your heart's not in the right spirit, you don't get the full. Now, here, watch this. How many know that God has a permissive will? How many believe that? How many believe God has a permissive will? How many believe God does not have a permissive will? Why don't you raise your hand? You don't believe God has a What do I mean by a permissive will? Turn, take the mic around. What's a permissive will? Anybody know what that is? Close. What's permissive will is that which you want, no. and not altogether what God, not altogether, altogether God's perfect will for your life. Okay, that's close. Go, that's good. Anybody else? What's the, what's the, what's the, I just gave you the definition in the word itself. Permissive will. It's what God permits. It's his, he gives permission See, permission is not the same thing as causing something to be or wanting something to be. He permits it. Permissive means that there's some things in our lives that are not God's perfect will. But God allows it according to our level of faith. Watch this. There's sometimes God will tell you to give $1,000 and you'll say, Lord, okay, I'm going to give $100. Now, what happens is... God still blesses you, number one, because he's good like that. He's omnibenevolent. God's better to you than you could ever be to yourself. Even if you were never faithful, God would still be faithful to you because that's who he is. Watch this. But God's omnibenevolence does not amount to us automatically realizing his perfect will in our lives. See, watch this, between perfect and permission, there are principles. Principles. And so sometimes, so we'll do, we'll do this, okay, God said do this, I didn't really do it, but I still get a measure of blessing because I had a measure of faith for it. It's still a measure of blessing because there was a measure of faith exercised in the doing of it. It still took faith and obedience to a measure to do what you, the little that you did do, even though it wasn't everything God told you to do. You may say, where do you get this from? Well, it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning with verse 6. For this I say, he that sows sparingly, that means holding back some. You say, oh, is, he, is he preaching a sermon about money? No, pay attention to what I'm telling you. Because the Lord told me, he said, Kenan, this is the key to unlocking the last leg of revival that will hit the earth. It's, this is the key to unlocking the last leg of revival. You say, well, how could you say that? I can show it to you in Scripture. Second Chronicles chapter 7. 
starting with the first verse, go all the way down, and then all the way down to verse 14. Everybody talks about if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. And that's absolutely true. But guess what? You got to read 13 verses prior to that. Look at this. Look at what it says. Now, when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven. Watch this. And consumed what? The offering and the sacrifices. That fire didn't fall in an empty bucket. That fire fell on the offering and the sacrifice. Before God even had a conversation with Solomon, Solomon made the largest sacrifice Israel had ever seen. It was such a big sacrifice, God came down from heaven himself and said, I got to see what's going on down there. Are y'all following me so far? See, don't, don't get mad at someone's visitation. When you have not understood their sacrifice. Because the way God is set up. See, I'm telling you, in the Western world, we have missed this. And the reason we've missed it is because for the last 30 years, there has been such a negative reaction to televangelism. And to, and, and, to, and, to, and to people's point, there have been folks who have abused folks and manipulated people and folks gave their last and, 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 and they were promised this would happen by Thursday and it never happened. And now they're saying, okay, this is some hot mess. And what do they do? They shut up their bowels of compassion. They shut up their checkbooks. And they said, you know what? I'm going to focus on what I need. See, I'm telling you, see, some deliverance is going to happen tonight. Because the Lord showed me, he said that the, the American church and the Western church at large has not had a revelation of who God is as it relates to when it comes to how we delegate and how we distribute and how we relate to our treasure. The Catholic Church, and if you, if you grew up Catholic, if you're currently Catholic, don't be offended by this. This is a historical fact. Whether you like it or not, this is a historical fact. The Catholic Church instituted the vow of poverty. That's where it comes from. And we were taught that the broker you are, the more humble you are. But the problem is, when I was broke, I was prideful. When, when, when I, other broke people I rolled with, they were all full of pride. So being broke and humility are not the same. First of all, we've misinterpreted the scripture. It doesn't say the people who are broke are rich in faith. No. He says, hasn't God chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith? Meaning that those who have little resources really don't have a lot of option but to put their faith and trust in God. Amen. And that's why it tends to be that people with less resources have developed the capacity to believe God on a higher level. You've never believed God for a miracle in your finances unless you've had trouble in your finances. Bill Gates has never prayed about money. Well, he ain't prayed, period, but... <laughs> Oh, he prayed. No, he has prayed. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. I'm going to tell you why. You don't know that these people are actually occultists. They do all kinds of stuff. They pray to idols. They do. But they don't pray about money to pay their light bill. What they're praying about is world domination. Y'all follow me here now? I know I'm a little edgy. Just stay with me for a second. 
Watch this. He said, take no thought for your life. And guess what? He meant what he said. He meant what he said. Well, see, because see, but no, when he was saying that, because in the Greek, when it says thought, <laughs> no, no, no. Take, somebody say this with me. Say, I will take no thought for my life. What I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, what I'm going to put on. Now, watch this. If I divorce myself from the, I feel the Holy Ghost, somebody, when I, div oh, go glory to God, when I divorce myself from the responsibility to take care of me, I am now plugged in to a source that is greater than I am. I can't worry about nothing. Why? Because it's God's responsibility to take care of me. When you were a little baby in your mother's womb, you never paid a bill. When you were, come on, when you were born into this world, you didn't get on welfare. Why? Because it was your mama's job. I submit to you, friends, the reason why it's so challenging. First of all, does anybody get anything out of this tonight? It's so challenging. I'm writing a book about this called Teach Me How to Prosper. Because, and I wrote a book about it already called Supernatural Favor, Living in God's Abundant Supply. Go get it. You can get it in the books if they have it. I don't know if they have it anymore, but they have it. Supernatural favor. And, and God taught me spiritual laws that changed my life. The number one, write this down. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. If your entire, re, re, if, watch this. If your entire relationship with God is based upon what he can do for you, you have not met the God of the Bible. I challenge somebody else. See, this is what I realized. The key to breaking the spirit of poverty is to embrace the doctrine of God's goodness. See, it's hard to receive from a God you don't believe is all good. And, I, and I'm guilty of this. See, it's how, we, it's how we were raised. Many of us, we were raised with conditional love. And a, and a schizophrenic love. Know what I mean by that? When you were doing right, your parents said, oh, I love you. <laughs> God, God, shut up! <laughs> so it taught us that our parents were loving sometimes. Sometimes, not all the time. Not, not If you did certain things wrong, you can't get no love. Or maybe you were raised in a situation whereby it was based on performance. Certain cultures do this a lot. It's a performance-based culture. It was based on your grades, what you did, and then your parents would, would celebrate that sibling that accomplished a lot of things. When it came to you, it was just nothing there for you. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, your brother Kenny, he is a doctor at 10 years old. What are you doing? Hmm? Daddy, I'm five now. Give me five more years to prove myself. Oh, 
Jesus. So, so the first key is believing in the omnibenevolence of God, that God is good. Listen to this. And it is, if it is God's unconditional will for me to be healed, if it's God's unconditional will for me to walk in righteousness, if it's God's unconditional will for me to live holy, if it's God's unconditional will for me to forgive people, why is it not God's unconditional will for me to be blessed? It is. It's unconditional will for me to be blessed. I got one person to say yes. Say amen. See, why? This is the key to breaking that thing. You've got to divorce that thing. Well, Pastor, see, we all got to struggle. I've heard people say that. I've heard people say that. I've heard Christians say that. Say, you know, we have to struggle because the Bible says that, uh, what is that quote they do at funerals with Job? A man's life shall be full of troubles. And all this. Other. What do they say? Anybody know what they say at a funeral? Um, say it. You know what I'm talking about? They'll say his day shall be full of trouble. I've heard people say that at funerals. That is the most false advertisement of God and his kingdom that we have ever done. And we wonder why this generation is struggling with God. I submit to you, sometimes it's not the contents, it's the package. We put God in a box called poverty. And what happens is that we're telling people to embrace this box. And they're saying, well, we don't want that ugly poverty box. But we're saying, but no, God's in that box. And they're saying, well, I don't, I don't want the box then. Because this is God. So get, oh, oh, yeah, because sometimes. And the thing is, do you know that not being able to pay your bills is not persecution? You can't use those scriptures. Well, the trying of your faith and the These were folks that were being executed for their faith. He was not talking about people who couldn't pay their bills because they didn't understand financial stewardship. That is not persecution. Tico is not persecuting you. They're running a business. Creditors are not attacking you. They're running a business. Don't rebuke the creditors in the name of Jesus. I bind you right now. Don't call this house no more. And if you call me, I got something for you. I'm telling you, because I'm a child of God. What if that creditor got some Bible on your behind and said, well, if you a child of God, Miss so-and-so, the Bible says that the wicked borrow and don't repay. No, 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 this is not persecution. It's not persecution. It's not persecution. It's a lack of understanding. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and all that getting, get understanding. Understanding is the ability to know the way something works. How does the kingdom work? Jesus said the kingdom is like a sower. Notice what Jesus does. He activates Genesis 8.22 in his description of the kingdom. Because as long as, as the earth remains, there shall be seed time and harvest. So what does Jesus say? The kingdom of God, watch this, even the kingdom, watch this, has to function according to the law of seed time and harvest. He said, the kingdom of God shall be like a man that sowed seed. 
The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. And he gives all of these analogies and scenarios to teach us that there are principles and precepts that govern the kingdom. And if you're going to function in the kingdom, you have to embrace the principles. And you can't embrace the principles until you let go of wrong ways of thinking. The longer you fight the principles, the longer they don't work for you. If, watch this. If, if somebody was hungry or, or, or hadn't had eaten all day and they were getting dizzy, what was the first thing they said? I need to eat something. I know y'all say that, especially on fasting day. Two minutes into the fast, I'm feeling dizzy. I need to eat something. No, no, no. Why do we correlate the dizziness or the headache or whatever the infirmity is with the fact that we've not eaten something because we have adopted a reciprocity. We know that eating food gives you nourishment. We know that eating food gives you energy. So we can connect a lack of energy with a lack of consuming food. And what do we do to fix it? We eat something real quick. Come on, somebody. Because your blood sugar drops, you get hungry, you got to eat a carbohydrate to pick it back up again. We know that if we don't eat, it's going to have a physical effect on our bodies. Am I talking to anybody today? So how is it then when our spiritual lives are malnourished or when there's weakness in our ability to, to walk in what is being preached and walk in what is being taught and walk in what is being read, why don't we believe that there's an element that we need to inculcate into our lives in order to make up the gap from what we heard on Sunday and what we're seeing on Monday? We do not, watch this, we, listen, there's nobody in this room that's so spiritual that when you get a little headache or something or something that's connected to physical thing, you say, well, you don't do that. Most of y'all don't do that. What you do is go grab a Snickers or something to give you some energy. Because we automatically, in the natural, I'm not saying you, you, some of you might pray in tongues like that to get the energy back. I'm not saying that's wrong. But I'm, I'm using an analogy. I'm saying in the natural, we correlate a, a, a negative response in our bodies with something that we're missing in our diet. So why then do we, when we're struggling with something, see, this is what poverty does. Poverty is a religious system. Are y'all following me so far? I'm about to close. So what does poverty do? Poverty blames something external for an internal condition. See, like, you, you understand the example? Okay. When you're hungry and you're about to pass out because of fast, you say, I got to get something in me to fix this. Good God Almighty. We don't point at our boss and say, it's your fault I'm hungry. Because if my salary was higher. <laughs> no, you don't. You just eat something to get, to get your energy back up. It is unnatural to blame, an, unless you're a child, to, if you're an adult, to blame someone else for an internal situation. In the same way it is unnatural. See, but this is, this is that's mammon. Mammon says, my lack is their fault. My struggle is their fault. What I don't have is their fault. Watch this. Here it goes a little bit more psychotic. It says, what I don't have is because they have too much.
They got too much. That's why people rob and kill. They take. Because you know what? Oh, okay, so you got that, so I'm going to take that. Do you know how young people are being murdered over this stuff I'm talking about, the spirit of mammon and poverty? People have been, a young man in Philadelphia, a Philadelphia guy, was just murdered. They robbed him in the store. They're, they're murdering people. A guy, went, a jeweler went to a concert, and they robbed and murdered this jeweler and took every ounce of jewelry that he had on his body. This is the spirit behind home invasions and kidnappings because poverty says there's not enough to go around. And your current condition is that person's fault. It's because they have too much that you're struggling. So the idea is that let me take what you have. No. Can I go deeper, Pastor Bryce? I'm not even into my message yet. I'm not even in my message. How does this manifest in the church? I want to see how, how we're going to go here. How does this manifest itself in the body of Christ? Can anybody tell me? Go ahead. I wanted to ask, why do we demonize Christians that are wealthy? I want, I'll pose that to the church. Why do we do that? Why do we demonize Christians who are wealthy? Do we do that? Do, 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 we, do people tend to demonize those who are wealthy? Christians. You think so? So if so, why? I want to hear from you guys. Go ahead. Let's get real. I want to get real. I want to get real. Well, because of that idea of poverty, that if you're working for the Lord, you shouldn't be rich. Mm -hmm. You know, how dare you take money from God, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying I believe that. No, no, no. I, 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 no, I got you. <laughs> that's a disclaimer. No, no I got you. I'm, I'm saying that that's, I, and I hear that, mm -hmm. especially from people from the Catholic Church. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when they give tithes, it's a dollar, two dollars. They put mm -hmm. it in the, in the container, in the, yeah. in the, the plate that goes around. You ever wonder, how is it that people put two dollars in these Catholic churches made of limestone? And golden plates being passed around, brass plates, copper plates, an organ that's a million dollars. How? The Basilica in Rome. Go, go ahead over here. No, I'm gonna come back to because that's I'm gonna I'll come back to that. So just remind me. I was raised in the Catholic Church, and so I know that there's lots who do tithe, and you can see the blessing on their life that tithe faithfully because there's yeah. a lot who really do. But to answer the other person's question, I would say jealousy. It's for those that would demonize those that are Christian, that are wealthy, they're jealous of their blessing. Okay. I want to go to this thing about, go, go ahead over here. But let me say it now while you're going over there. The reason why I, I say the thing about the Catholic Church, I know there are a lot of Catholics who are very devout who give. Like a lot of celebrities who are Catholic give millions to the Catholic Church. But here's the point I'm trying to make with that. The vow of poverty was not for those who know, it was for those who don't know. Because you have to understand, the Catholic Church was never dependent upon that vow for their sustenance. You see? You're talking about a, an institution that has its own Swiss guard, its own central bank, its own passport, the Vatican passport, and that owns property all over the world. You go to Israel, they got buildings in Israel. You go to Arab nations, they got buildings in Arab nations. It's because sometimes religion gives us something that it doesn't believe. I'll give another example. There's a brother, he had a, a, a thing, he was preaching against all these charismatic and prosperity preachers, and I did some research. He had a, a conference called Strange Fire out in California. And, and boy, I'm telling you, it was all, he published a book with Thomas Nelson Publishers called Strange Fire that sold millions of copies. They found out the brother's net worth was $75 million. 
So hold on now. You filling your whole church with people who have gathered to hear about how shady and how wretched and how wicked these prosperity preachers are, and you're sitting on $75 million that you made off of the books and the tapes and the CDs and the Bibles and the commentaries that you produced. But I'm showing you how this system works. You see? It's, it's a system of manipulation. There's no way he believes what he's teaching. It's not possible. Because if you believe what you're teaching, why haven't you emptied your bank account and gave every penny to the state of California? Because you're a hypocrite. He doesn't believe a word he's speaking about. He's pandering to his constituency. It's a business. It's a business. It's not real. But you believe it's real, so you go to the conference, you buy his tapes, you listen to his radio show, and now you're judging all the pastors on TV, and you still broke. It's a game. I've been in this thing a long time. I've seen the game play for years. It's just like, you think that these politicians hate each other? If you do, you've lost it. They will spit at each other across the aisle and go play golf three hours later. Right. Children go to the same schools. It's a game. It's manipulation. And it's made to manipulate the poor. Why do they have malt liquor stores in every urban community? You got stores where they sell drug paraphernalia, crack pipes, liquor filled with stuff that will give you cancer and kill you. Watch this, and they consume none of what they sell. I'm talking about mammon. And then, watch this, we wonder why there's crack all over, because the gas stations sell the crack pipes. I don't gotta go to China to get a crack, you can go to the gas station. I used to live in Ybor City, and there was a, a Pakistani, and this is not, this is not a racist comment. It, it doesn't matter what, what ethnicity they were. I have friends of all ethnicities. I'm making a point. It was a Pakistani uh, a, a gas station. And I go to the Pakistani gas station, and I try to use my debit card, and, and the person, and, and the, the machines weren't even working. Try to put it in this machine, it wasn't working, that machine wasn't working, that machine wasn't working. So I go to the counter, I said, none of your, you, every pump in this gas station does not take credit cards, which means I, if I come here at 10 o'clock at night, I got to risk my life mm. to get out the car and buy some gas, I know. to go inside the store. And so the lady said, well, it's because people steal, and what, did they steal the whole pump? <laughs> they lifted this pump up off the ground and put it on the back of a pickup truck. You know what I told her, I said, if you're not going to have a real gas station, that sells real gas like everybody else in town, get your butt out of here. She cussed me out in Farsi. <laughs> Why? Because the devil is manipulative. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I got caught up on the whole thing. Oh, no I'm worries. sorry. Um, I guess the first thing I was going to say was there's still a perception that Jesus was poor. Okay. And so if somebody's driving a Bentley, they're like, well, how dare you? I mean, it's supposed to be a non surfer lack system. You're supposed to be able to buy, if that's a $350,000 car, why aren't you feeding people with that $350,000? How dare you have something that other people in the body doesn't have? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, hey, yeah, people do things like that. Go ahead. And the, the question was uh, in reference to, um, I guess, was it jealousy? Yes, our sister said jealousy. So um, I think it's just because I think the ones that's jealous are the ones that have the poverty mindset. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was going to say. I don't really, I don't get caught up with it personally. Right, of course. With, you know, anything. So I think it's just a poverty yeah. mindset. 
But see, here's the problem. The poverty mindset is very insidious. You don't know you have it sometimes because it's subconscious. It, it functions within the fabric of your thoughts. So, so, so <clears throat> watch this. If, and let's not, even, we, let's not even graduate to the preacher. If somebody on the pew next to you if you believe that God is not good, and if you believe that God is scarce, meaning that he does not have enough resources to go around, and if you believe that it's your portion to suffer, it will trigger jealousy in you when you see someone else getting blessed, listen to me, hear me by the Holy Ghost, with something you believe you can't have. Because if you believe you could have it, there's no need to be jealous about it. I'm setting you free right now. If you believe not only that you can have it, but if you believe it was already yours. Because there's no way my father brings a cake to the house with my other siblings and we all not eating cake and ice cream. If siblings are getting jealous of the cake, it means they don't know the father. And they don't know the family dynamic. No way oil runs down the head and then touch the toes. So you got to understand what I'm saying to you. It is a belief system that discredits God's goodness. You think God going to let the girl next to you get a whole husband and you've been waiting for 80 years and he going to be like, not today. I'm telling you, you hear what I'm saying? It's a belief that God's not good. So listen, because people don't believe God's good, they feel like the only way they can get blessed is by always blessing themselves. Or always trying to get in the mix of the blessing. See, if I don't take care of me, nobody will. So the sister gets up there and she says, you know, I just want to give, thank God who's ahead of my life and give honor to God and, and, and the first lady and, and, and man of God of the house and honorable, prestigious uh, elders, deacons, and bishops and to the, uh, uh, for the, the 24 elders gathered uh, viewing us today, right? <laughs> I want to thank God that he just blessed me with Brother Cleophas. Um, And you sitting up there, one eye closed, just looking like, not what, Della Reese? What's the lady that had the, I forgot her name. Anyway, huh? Esther. You know, you said, it was Sanford and Son. Was it Sanford and Son? You sitting up there like, oh, ugly. <laughs> thank you, sister. I was trying to figure out who it was. Thank you. you got, that's exactly who I was talking about. No, no, no. No, I'm not going to be mad at her. I'm going to thank my God. Because if it's raining men, <laughs> it means that the men's factory is open. It's not close. <laughs> Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Her, her, her. Y'all blame this on the Dominican Republic. They did this to me. What I'm trying to show you is this. In order to receive what God has for you, you have to change the way you think. Write this down. The message you embrace is the manifestation you walk in. The message you embrace is the manifestation you walk in. 
I said the message you embrace is the manifestation that you walk in. I've been where most of you are. And so what happens is that there were seasons in my life, and I'm in here, there were seasons in my life where I would hear a word and I would compare it to my situation. And I would hear that word and compare it to the situation and they don't look the same. They're not, they're not, they're not equal. They're not congruent. And so sometimes in the lack of congruency, it builds frustration because we're saying, okay, I know that word is true, but how come it's not my reality? And you have two choices in that instance. You can either fight for the word or you can resist the message and its messenger. Do you know that's what people do psychologically when they can't receive something? They demonize the message. That can't be from God because if that was from God, then I would be seeing the manifestation. Not necessarily. Jealousy is a nasty demon. It's one of the worst I've ever seen. It'll have you hating the very people who are your destiny helpers. In the kingdom, as Dr. Pearl Coupe would say, we don't compete, we complete. We don't compete. The kingdom of God is a common wealth. You're not my competition, I'm not yours. Not my competition. Nobody's my competition. And I'm no one's competition. And all we have to do sometimes is ask the right questions. How? Not, not well, why do you get blessed? No, no, no. How do you get blessed? See, how is an empowering word. Because it, it insinuates that, that if I make some adjustments, I can see similar results. Why do people pay for seminars? People pay millions of dollars to go to seminars. Why? Because they believe that knowledge is transferable. I was, I was talking to our sister and we were talking about this thing and I said jealousy is rooted in the poverty spirit get it out of your life if you got to lay on the altar for three days say Lord get every residue of mammon out of me anything that will keep me from fully surrendering to you I don't want it inside of my life I don't want it in my thinking I don't want it in my relationships I don't want it in the way I connect with people. I don't want it in my worship. I want to know that the, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That, Lord, there's nothing, no good thing that you will withhold from those who walk upright. That you are a good, benevolent father and you have enough to go around. You are not going to give to my brother and then miss me. You are not inequitable. You are not that kind of God. You are a just God. You are a good God. You are a righteous God. You are a blessed Father. If you really believe that, it'll change your life. Because you'll say, how? Oh, you wrote a book. How did you do that? I want to write a book. How? 
That's an empowering question, not, well, why? Why says, I don't want to move from where I am? How? How did you not want to do it? How, how can I receive that, too? I want it. If you're going to be nosy, be nosy in the spirit. Oh, you had an angelic visitation? How you had that? You know how because in the country, folks are so nosy. They know what everybody drive and what everybody wear and who married who and how many divorces they had. They just know everything. I'm not saying stop. Be nosy in the spirit. Oh, you had an angelic visitation? Really? What? How, how you did that? I want one. Little kids are like, I want one. Children believe in sharing. They do. He says, come as a little child. Because a child believes that whatever their sibling has is theirs. I want one. Oh, there's pizza? Okay, I want some pizza. Oh, y'all got lemonade? I want some lemonade. Why? If we're children of God. Do we not approach it with that kind of mentality? Oh, you got blessings? I want some blessings. You got favor? I want some favor. How? I want it. That's the kind of person I am. I believe that if it's there and it's available for me, I want it. I live my life that way. I don't care what you say. You can say whatever you want to say. I don't care whether you like it or not. That's me. I was telling Sister Renee the other day. <laughs> we were joking about it because the way I am now, and I'm saved and full of the Holy Ghost, but in terms of my personality, I've been, this has been my personality for as long as I can remember, except I was more quiet when I was younger. Only difference. But the things I like now, I like then. And I'm not saying in a negative way because we should grow and evolve. I'm talking about disposition. And psychologists believe that a personality really doesn't change. So what I'm saying is that this is me, and I've come to believe. This is my belief about God. Lord, you have good things for me. You have good things for me, and I receive them. And here it is. I receive them whether you receive them or not. See, that's the thing. See, you can receive something, and somebody else might not want to receive it. That doesn't mean I'm not going to receive it. If it's on the table... Are you clapping that on? That's Naomi Light. She was like, yes, that is right. I've been trying to tell y'all that. I want to receive it. If God says this is yours, you can look at it if you want to. You can debate over it if you want to. You can try to figure out whether you can get it or not, but I receive it. Don't get, listen. You can receive it with me, or you can watch me receive it. But either way, I'm going to receive it. That's how you got to think. That's... I receive it. If a healing's on the table, I want it. If deliverance is on the table, I want it. If the Syrophoenician woman could get the crumbs from the master's table and crumbs were enough to deliver her daughter, how much more children of Abraham that have the whole loaf of bread, I want all that God has for me. And there's nothing you can do to stop me. You might not like it. You might Come on. But I'm going to receive it. I believe it because he died for it. And if he died for it, then glory to God, I want it. If it's prosperity, I want it. If it's healing, I want it. If it's my children blessed, I want it. If it's my whole house saved, I want it. As for me and my... Listen to me. Motive matters. 
Watch what happens. I challenge you tonight, this is your homework. If you start thinking about how God can get things through you, I feel the Holy Ghost on this. I dare you to sit down and just spend some time with the Lord. Says, Lord, what do you want to get through me? No, 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 not to me, through me. Because whatever he can get through you, he can get to you. Oh, glory to God. I, I dare you to start thinking, Lord, who do you want to bless through me? Who do you want to heal through me? Because there's no way that healing passes through you and doesn't touch your body. There's no way the blessing passes through you and it doesn't touch your life. There's no way the oil passes through you and you don't get oily. I dare you. Say, God, what do you want to do through me? I'm willing and I'm ready. And I'm telling you something. Stuff's going to start knocking on your door like you've never seen before. I challenge you. Stop praying about Tico. I'm praying about Bright House. Stop it. Leave it alone. Because if you pray on that level, that's the plane of existence you're going to operate on. You only know God that can pay a bill. But if you're talking about a God that gives nations as an inheritance, that's another level of revelation. It's not about a car or a house. It's about the nations, according to Matthew 28, 19. Because the demonic realm, Brother Carlos, is focused on nations. The globalists are focused on the nations. They don't just want the neighborhood, they want the nations. If we're children of God, God says, I want to give you the nations. How can God give us the nations? If he can't even trust us with our neighbor. trying to show you. Now listen, I, I've been preaching this for years, but there's a shift coming tonight because God is breaking that spirit of poverty that has kept you hostage to disobedience off of your life. That thing that makes you argue with God when he tells you to do something, rooted in mammon. Tonight we issue a divorce decree we are divorcing mammon as a church. We are divorcing mammon as believers. We are divorcing the spirit of mammon that gets us so preoccupied with our needs that God can't even trust us to pray for the nations. God says, if, you'll give, if, if, you'll, if you will begin to pray for the nations, I'll take care of your needs. That's the key. I'm, I know we're out of time. Listen to me. I'm, I'm prophesying right now. Some of y'all gonna be able. You're gonna begin to stumble over blessings. That's a new level of living. I'm talking about. I'm talking about not looking at. You done looked at your Zelle account ten times today. But listen to me. I'm talking about another level. When you start stumbling over blessings, you turn around to the left, it hits you in your face. The Bible says these blessings shall pursue you. Korabashata. And overtake you. Overtake you. I said they will overtake you. You'll be trying to run from them and hide and play hide and see. No, no, you better get on up. That, that blessing going to chase you down. Go on, stop playing. You be, stop playing. You, stop, stop. Just get, no, go on. Blessings will stalk you. You turn the corner, there's a blessing looking at you. Turn the other corner, he's like,
world, the curse chased you. That's why you moved from a different city and it still was there. Come on, somebody. You dated a different person, they still was there. You went to a different nightclub, it was still there. Different job, still there. The curse pursued you, but in the kingdom is the blessing. Oh, glory. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. One more time, say. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Come on, somebody. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. How many believe that his goodness? Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. His goodness. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. When my life lay down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Come on, somebody say your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Hold up, so tired. And these blessings shall pursue you and overtake you. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be when you go in and when you go out. Hallelujah. A few moments just right there. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Thank you, Lord. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. One more time, sing it. Your goodness is running after. It's running after. With my life laid down. With my life laid down. I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Come on, one more time, sing your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. One more time, sing. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life, with my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Listen, if you're here tonight 
And you say, Pastor, I believe the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. And I want to step into a kingdom mindset. We're going to give to the Lord, but first I want you to come down, if that's you, come down to the altar quickly. We won't be long at the altar. We break that spirit of poverty, lack, and debt off of the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus, it is no longer your portion. It is no longer your lifestyle. You will not be envious of others. You will not be jealous. You will not be angry or bitter. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Keep playing it, Ellen. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to renounce mammon. Just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I renounce and I reject and I divorce the spirit of mammon, poverty, greed, worry, lack, debt, fear, and everything connected to it. And right now, I connect my faith to your unlimited supply, your miraculous provision. I have no fear. I am not worried about anything in my life. I'm not worried about tomorrow. I'm not worried about the economy, gas prices, wars, rumors of wars. I trust in your word. You are my source. I trust in you. I depend on you. And your word declares that I am to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. All these things will be added to me. Everything I need has already been supplied. Everything I desire has already been provided in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your unlimited supply, your miraculous provision. You've met every need in my life as I trust in your word in the name of Jesus. Now, once you just receive, just receive. Just receive it. His goodness is pouring over you. Just receive his goodness. See, his goodness is following after you. So the first thing you got to do is believe how good he is. Oh, he's good. He's holding on to your hand. His hand is unchanging. It is unwavering. It's unwavering. He holds on to you even when you don't hold on to yourself. He loves you even when you don't love yourself. In the name of Jesus, like a child being carried by their father in the wilderness. God says, I'm carrying you through every circumstance. Lift your hands. Listen, I want to show y'all something. This, this, is, this is cutting edge stuff I'm giving you. Years ago, I had gone to Sanford. I had to, um, uh, I, had, I bought a car on like over the phone, and I had to go pick it up at Sanford, Florida, which is a long ways from where I live. 
like over almost hour and a half, two hours almost. So I remember picking up the car, got in, filled out the paperwork, whatever. And this is me. This was my mind. Now, I, I found out something. I got to be careful how I share testimonies because saints be using your testimonies against you. Please don't do that. It's a story. It's an illustration. Don't try to use it to find out about my life. Okay? It's just a story. So anyway, I said, <clears throat> I remember driving down the street and I saw this other car. I was like, man, I really wish I could have got that car. And isn't that ungrateful? But that was me. And so I said, I really, I really would like that car. And the Lord said, he said, you could have had that if you would have believed me for that. He said, I gave you according to your faith. According to your faith, be it done unto you. He said, the reason, he said, that's what you had the faith for. You believe him for a townhouse, that's the townhouse faith. Glory be to his name. Come on, somebody. What are you believing for? Have you limited your faith to what you can see? I don't know if you can see it, you don't need faith to receive it. be to his name if you believe well, well I'm just going I'm just going to believe God for uh, what you're going to do well I, I'm going to start a paper business where I deliver newspapers well that's what God's going to give you but if you say Lord I'm willing to believe you for more and I'm willing listen to this I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get what you promised me. But see, that's a whole nother prayer right there. See, that's dangerous. Are you willing to do what it takes now? Are you willing to believe and obey on the level of your expectations? I feel the Holy Ghost on this. On the level of your expectations, fire the Holy Ghost. Are you willing to believe and obey on the level of your expectancy? See, that's the key. That's the key. I was going to buy my six packs on Amazon, but I said, you know, I'm just going to believe you for it, Lord. I told Prime, cancel that order. I don't need that no more. I want to get like Brother Mike back there and just, we're going to get right. I'm telling you, give me the, come on somebody. I feel the Holy Ghost. December of this year, I'm prophesying now, by December, I hear the Lord say, eight is the number of new beginnings. But eight is the number of good beginnings. Okay. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, as we sow tonight, this is just a memorial seed because this is the death of our old season and the birth of a new beginning. Let this seed be a memorial. God, we give sacrificially like Solomon did in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and chapter 7. God, I pray tonight you will visit this sacrifice for your glory. I bless this time. I bless this offering. I bless these people who have offered themselves as a living sacrifice and everything they possess as an offering to you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may give to the Lord.
All right, I want to sing happy birthday to Ella. Where's she? Can you play the birthday song? years old. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let me dismiss you. Those who want to give, go ahead and give. Did I do everything right? We went over. Oh, oh, okay. Y'all should have told me. I would have wrapped up a little early. Amen. <laughs> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bless you with his peace. His shalom, nothing missing and nothing broken. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's just grab some quick over there and just encourage her. She's 14. We're proud of her. She's awesome. God bless you guys. And don't forget to give. Amen. <laughs>